Hi, I'm Dan, and if you're new to homebrewing, so am I. Welcome to my adventures in homebrewing. Hey everybody, it's Dan, and it's that time once more to go around the world one more time and have a beer or two along the way. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I'm sorry for the late uh, get out of this video, but you know how life goes, things get in the way and you just gotta adapt. Uh, thanks for listening to the episode last week about Schwartz Beer. It's truly appreciated. Uh, it is one of my favorite beers. Um, I don't know what it is, but I have an affinity for dark beer. I mean, I like porters, stouts, imperial stouts, imperial porters, barrel aged stuff, Schwartz beers, Dunkles, and you, you name it. It's the kind of beer I kind of like, which is um, kind of cool. So yeah. Um, so uh, last week we talked about Schwartz beer. Uh, I actually have that beer keg right now. Uh, and it, it's really, really good. Uh, if you're into um, dark beers and you're into porters and things, you'll be able to tell uh, the slight differences in the flavors of the beer. Yes, this is very, very uh, roasted uh, flavor forward. And that's kind of what I like. I kind of like that nice, kind of nice, deep, rich, uh, roasted flavors of malts that you can get for from dark beers. So yeah, so yeah, it'll be interesting what we talk about this week. So a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, thank you to the guys over at Escarpment Labs for continue, their continuous support. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to the great people over at Brewers Friend for the great offer they've given us for the next little while for when you guys first sign up. And also, uh, you know, everyone who has ever supported me along the way uh, has been greatly appreciated. Um, I do need to say uh, one thing I did as I have an idea for maybe that's something that's upcoming. Um, I would like to maybe see if there's anybody in my local area who, are, who is listening to the podcast uh, that would like to uh, get together for a brew day, learn to brew, or just collab on a beer. If you're interested, give me a shout uh, at uh, myadventuresinhomebrewing at gmail.com or through Facebook or through Instagram or even on Twitter. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, let me know what you think. If you're down, we can set something up. And if you're a first time brewer and you want to learn a little bit more about what I have and how I use it, let me know. I'd be more than willing to have you guys come out and we can run a brew day here and, and get something going. Um, thank you also to uh, Jeff over at at the urban barrel for hooking me up with uh, two five gallon bourbon barrels. Greatly appreciate it. They are going to be getting put to use very, very soon. So yeah. So without further ado, let's go for a quick uh, message from our sponsor and uh, we'll be right back. Hey, it's Dan here one more time, and I'm happy to say that we are now, or should I say my podcast is now sponsored by Scarpen Laboratories. Yeast production for the fermentation of the exceptional craft beer. Whether your kit is on the stovetop or in a commercial brew house, wholesale yeast and quality control for the profitable bro pro brewer. Community engagement and education for the discerning home brewery. If you are a craft brewer and you love using quality yeast, then you really do need to check out Escarbon Laboratories. Hey everybody, it's Dan here one more time to say thank you to the great people over at Brewer's Friend for the fantastic offer they have just given us. For all the new users of Brewer's Friend for their first year, you're going to receive 15% off. That's 50% savings on this great piece of software. And what is Brewer's Friend? Well, Brewer's Friend is a complete recipe designer, brew day planner, and journal. The details make the difference between an average batch of homebrew and a truly ex excellent brew that is repeatable. Brewer's Friend automates the details, guides you through the brewing process, and saves all the data. And how do you get all this fun stuff? Well, once you go in and you sign in and you go to sign up for Brewer's Friend and to get that 15% savings, you need to use the promo code PODCAST. That's all you gotta do when you sign up Type in podcast for the promo code and you will get 15% off. Again, thank you to the great people at Brewer's Friend for this, and I'll see you on the other side. We're back. And as you can see, I'm drinking my coffee. It's morning. 
coffee's needed. But you know where another good place to put coffee is, especially when it's espresso in beer. But that's neither here nor there. So we are going to be moving on to what we're actually talking about this week. We're going to be talking about all things Baltic Porter. So Baltic Porters come out from the Baltic area of, uh, of Europe. So you're looking at Lithuania, you're looking at Estonia, uh, I believe Finland's in there, Germany is in along there, uh, parts of Russia, uh, I think Sweden too. There's a few other places. I'm going to put up a map probably um, when I go into post this up on uh, on Facebook and all that about uh, where this is beer is from. Um, it is. It came out roughly around 1722. I'm going to see if I can remember the name of the gentleman who is responsible for putting it out. Uh, it, well, I think it was James Harwood from the Shore Ditch Brewery in around 1722. There's been a few things that have said that uh, this beer didn't really exist or whatever else. It was created mainly to fill a void uh, for this for for people who were the working class that wanted a nice beer so this beer was pro, pro predominantly uh drank by uh porters so they're like street porters or river porters so these are the people that would actually take your luggage luggage place on the boat follow you around make sure it's getting from point a to point b kind of like um a, you know a Sherpa that you would see in Nepal uh, when you're climbing Everest, the guys that carry all your heavy shit. So these are the guys that would make sure your heavy shit would get to uh, your carriage, your boat, your hotel room, you name it. These are the people that would, that this beer was appealing to. Now, porters are, are very similar to stouts. Difference being is, is that while, while they still have predominantly the same grain bill, um, usually the alcohol content is a lot different. Uh, with stouts, you're looking at between 4 and 4.5, maximum 5% for a normal stout uh, for the alcohol content. And when you're looking at porters, you're looking at something at a, in around, uh, say, like between 5 up to maybe 6%, just for a standard porter, which is a huge difference when you're looking at what uh, the alcohol content is. But... It, it's always been a very similar thing. Both of these beers have, like stouts and porters, have similar origins and where they come from. Now, we're looking at things like, oh my goodness, what we got to see here? Um, I'll read a little bit of history. How's that? So a little bit of history is a porter is a style of beer that was developed in London, England in the early 18th century. It was a well-hopped and dark in appearance owing to the use of brown malts. Well, yeah, brown malts, chocolate malts, black malts, and things like that will give you that nice, dark, black characteristic. But it'll also give you that really nice, deep, rich, roasted barley, roasted coffee, even sometimes the, that really nice, dark chocolate flavor that you, what we're all looking for. The name originated from its popularity with street and river porters, kind of like I said. Now, the popularity of porter was significant, and it became the first beer style to be brewed across the world and production had commenced in Ireland, North America, Sweden, and Russia by the end of the 18th century. Now, the history of stout and porter are intertwined. The name stout used for a dark beer came about because strong porters were marked as stout porter. Later was shortened to just stout. Guinness Extra Stout was originally called Extra Superior Porter and was not given the name Extra Stout until 1840. Today, the terms are used by different breweries almost interchangeably to describe dark beers, and the two styles have more in common than in distinction. It's kind of like we were talking about. Both these beers come from around the same time period, most definitely uh, the same kind of characteristics in what you use for grain and what you use for yeast and what you use for hops. Now, one of the big differences, like I said, is the alcohol content. But now we're going to talk about something that I really do enjoy 
but it's a beer that I normally have to share with people just due to the fact that it's such a high alcohol content. It's usually about a 10% beer, and I usually have to share it with people because sitting down and drinking a bottle of this by myself is a, it's quite the undertaking because that's a beer that's usually your one and done, especially when those beers come in large bomber bottles. Well, it's a bomber bottle. You're looking at something that's like 750 milliliters to a liter. So those beers are the ones that I have to be very careful with. And that's me though. So now a Baltic Porter is a version of an Imperial Stout. And what's, what does that mean? So I'll read a little bit more history here. Uh, Baltic Porter is a version of Imperial Stout that originated in the Baltic region in the 19th century. Imperial stouts exported from Britain in the 18th century were popular in countries around the Baltic Sea and were recreated uh, locally using local ingredients and brewing traditions. So in around that area, like I was saying, all those different places have different ways to make sure that beer meets their, their requirements, their characteristics, and what they use also dictates how the, the flavors are going to be. Now, all those different Baltic states all have different, I guess, brewing styles. Like if you look at Germany, uh, they have the Rhein Heskobolt, so it has the German purity laws for beer. Uh, then you go into Sweden, you go into Russia, whatever else. Everyone has different ingredients and different styles, and they all impart different flavor characteristics or notes in on what this beer is. Now, uh, in early days, up until, mm, let's see, what, else, what are we going to say here? So early versions were warm fermented until the late 19th century. Okay, yeah. So everything, what they're saying is, is basically everything that these beers were, just because of the fact that there wasn't temperature control at the time, were all top fermented beers. And we all would know what that means. So you're looking at beer that's being fermented between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's a top fermenting yeast working its way down. Okay, we get it. But from what I've been reading is that now the Baltic Porter has evolved into something a little different. Yes, it still falls into uh, a porter, but after the Second World War, um, they found ways to actually make this beer, but using lager yeast. So it basically is falling into the lager category. So it's falling into things like a Schwartz beer and also uh, a Dunkel and things like that. But you're also looking at a gravity at around 10 per, or an alcohol content of about 10% or higher. That's due to the fact when the grain bill and you're looking, when you make one of these, you're looking at it almost a 25 pound grain bill. So you're looking at a lot of Marisada or Turo. You're looking at Crystal and Dark Munich. You're looking at some, maybe some Vienna. Then you're looking at things for color. You're looking at maybe black malt, chocolate malt, roasted barley, things that are impart that nice, dark, rich flavor. But you also need those malts that are also going to convert their sugars into the alcohol content that you're, that's required. So you're looking at maybe the high sugar grains so you're looking at maybe a lot of base malt you're looking at a lot of things that are, have sugars like crystal malts those are the ones that are going to have a really nice sweet flavors lots of sugars to to give to make this beer so I will put up uh, in the description what a lot of these countries are, and maybe I'll try and find out a little bit more about their brewing styles about this beer. But what I can say is that, um, where are we? Ah. So yeah, that's okay. We'll move on. We'll edit this part out. But um, Baltic porters are basically... Um, one of those unique unicorn beers that when someone finds a way to make it, you make it really, really well. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I first had my first Baltic Porter, uh, I wasn't too sure about it. I was, wasn't was really sure uh, if it was going to be one of those things that I really, really wanted. And then I was like, yeah, it is one of those things that I really do like and I really do want. So, I got, I delve, I dove headfirst into making this beer. So now what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be making my very first Baltic Porter. So I've got a roughly about a 20 pound grain pill. So five pounds less than what I think is normal 
but we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, so I've got my mirror solder. I've got crystal, uh, uh, light crystal, dark crystal, light Munich, dark Munich. I think I even put some Vienna in there. I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to have a look. Um, and then, yeah. So if you're if you're watching me on YouTube, that that pile of green that's by me. That's all. That's what's going inside my beer. So I'll probably be starting that a little bit later today. It's 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 Sunday. It's you know. It's Sunday. What, what, what can you do, right? Um, and um, yeah, so what I find the big differences between Imperial, Imperial Stout and a, and a Baltic Porter, uh, predominantly I find it's mouthfeel and also flavor. I find porters are a lot more roasted flavor forward and uh like you get that nice kind of rich dark uh kind of dark chocolate and also the uh roasted coffee flavors that probably they're a little bit more assertive than you would with a stout now with stouts i find that they are very much more subdued they're much more mellow much more creamy feeling and the notes are a lot gentler shall we say they're not as assertive now mind you a lot of people don't have the same kind of flavor profiles or the not flavor profiles preferences as most i know i like my stouts to be uh com sometimes complex a little bit more well balanced between chocolate and coffee flavors maybe and then my porters i really do enjoy them being robust uh being full on that roasted coffee flavor. I think I got coffee on the brain because I don't know how many times I've said that today. Um, and I think a lot of things, um, people have a hard time with uh, things that are not necessarily, not necessarily what uh, they expect. I'm sorry, guys, I got distracted. Shiny object syndrome for here, this kid here. Um, now, I'm going to read a little bit of history. Maybe that'll help us out here a little bit. So, so what I hear, all the porters are produced in a wide variety uh, of Baltic states, for example, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Czech Republic, Germany, Poland, Russia, Ukraine, Denmark, Sweden, and the United States. Don't forget, just say North America because we make it here in Canada too. Uh, Baltic Porter is especially of many Polish breweries with countries with the country's oldest being uh, in uh, a certain area. I'm not going to be able to say in the name. I will put it up underneath here uh, so you'll see it in 1881. Fin uh, there's another brewery in Finland. I am not going to try and say it because I don't want to insult anybody. Uh, there's a brewery in Finland that has been brewing Baltic porters in Helsinki since the 1860s. While, while in Estonia, there's a newcomer specializing in barrel-aged porters. Uh, in Denmark, there's a world porter. Uh, the word porter is synonymous with imperial stouts. And a Wybro's Baltic Porter, now brewed at by Carlsberg, is known by both names. Porter and uh, a Porter was brewed in Germany in 1853 uh, until 1990, when production ceased in East uh, East Germany after unification. Uh, in 1998, uh, a brewery uh, um, resumed production of an old recipe. Uh, it was followed by another brewer by other brewers such as uh the newels okay again i'm not going to try and say this as much as i would love to be able to say these names i can't but i will put them underneath so you have an idea of what i'm talking about uh brewed in eight percent uh baltic porter so even in poland there is an is actually a baltic porter day so yeah I find myself rambling here a little bit, guys. I'm, I'm really sorry. But it's one of those things that it's, it's hard not to want to talk about when you're, uh, when, when you really do enjoy the style. You've been trying to learn as much as you can, and you're trying to get out what you know. And it's, it's, a, it's a big mess in my head right now trying to get out what I know. But 
hopefully that covers everything in a roundabout way. So today is also going to be brew day. So I'm actually going to try and uh, get a brew day in later this afternoon. And I am going to be making my Baltic Porter. And then hopefully from that, I'm going to put it into a bourbon barrel and let it chill out for a little while. So we'll see what happens. Um, if you want to know more about these styles of beers, uh, check out, uh, what is it? Designing uh, Great Res great Beers by Ray Daniels. Look at uh, the Oxford's B uh, Bible for Beer by Garrett Oliver. Uh, then there's the Beer Bible. And oh, and there's also, what's the other book? There's another, and, the, and there's a book, I think it's called Taste by uh, Randy Mosier, which is also very informative on this beer. So if there's anything else you guys want to know about this beer, go check it out. Check those books out. Lots of information on the internet. And also check out Brewer's Friend and there'll be a wide variety of things there that people will be able to tell you about this beer as well. So guys, thank you very much for coming along for the ride and a beer or two along the way. I'm Dan and uh, stay tuned because we're going to have some more guests coming back very, very soon. Cheers and I'll see you on the other side. Mm -hmm.